thank you, thank, thank you all um, for um, coming in. Um, I'm hoping this will be a very quick meeting, even though the agenda looks like it's long, it really is not. Um, it doesn't have to be anyway. This could be bam, bam, and we're in and out. Um, we can start with the minutes from June 24th. The minutes from July 15th are not yet um, available. They will be, and they'll get sent around to everybody. That's the joint meeting that we did with the select board on the transfers a couple weeks ago. Those minutes do not yet exist, but they will. Uh, the July 24th meeting was, I mean, the June 24th meeting was our last meeting um, where we were getting our final votes in on certain motions. Um, I, I don't know, if, I hope you've had I a chance. Can I move to accept the meeting? Yes, a minute. Second. Okay, um, is anybody opposed? Otherwise, I'll assume it's unanimous. You're opposed, Ira? No, no, I'm, I'm giving you the vote. <laughs> okay, so it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my God, everybody's here except for the alt. Um, okay, nine, zero, Karen, um, to accept the minute. Uh, the next item on the agenda is selection of finance committee leadership. Um, I don't know how to do this, to be honest. I'm, I'm going to be totally uh, I know totally how to do it. straight about that. I know how to do it. I'm going to nominate the people who are already in place because I believe that they've done an excellent job. And Fred, I'm going to say that I know that it's a common joke that the person who is the chair is the person who takes a job nobody else wants, but you have done a really good job in spite of everybody's jokes and the difficulty of the past year. So I'm gonna nominate you as the chair and Kathy as the vice chair, because I have great confidence that in your stead, she could also do a great job. I second, second. I second that. Thank you, I just wanna say, Thank you. And if anybody else is interested in being the chair, I am more than willing to step aside. Call for the vote <laughs> immediately. Willing. Call for Kathy, the vote. To do, do it again for a year. I, we talk, I asked Kathy the other day if she was willing to do it, and she said yes. So if nobody else wants the gig, um, I, I accept the nomination. I, Kathy does. And if that's the way you guys want to go, um, all those in favor of both, I guess, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Any nays? Aye, okay, well, thank you very much. Thank, um, you. thank you. Thank you, Ira, for your vote of confidence. Well, I thank you both for doing Fred, a great job. Fred is doing an outstanding, outstanding job as chairman. And I, I think it's a, I, I think it'll be nice to keep the continuity moving forward through this year. So thank you. Who is that 80s rocker who sang, stroke me, stroke me? Billy Squire. <laughs> Billy Squire. I'm, do, I'm feeling full Billy Squire at the moment. <laughs> very impressive. Really? <laughs> Honest to God, I was going to say Axl Rose. <laughs> nice job. Um, wish <laughs> okay. There's a lot of stuff floating around up here. Liaison role changes and updates. So the last time we selected liaison roles, and, and I, I don't, I don't want to like, um, what's the, the expression, um, bury the lead here. Um, it was 2019, so my list still has Janet Lowenstein in there. Um, there are a number of people in various departments who are no longer there, sadly, uh, in the DPW, of course, uh, Mark Vincent. Uh, Jay Norton is now the acting DPW head. The school superintendent is gone, um, the police chief, is different, it's Michael Hurley now. So there have been some changes, um, but we have a couple of members who have no responsibility in that area. And I noticed, for example, that one of um, Janet's roles was affordable housing and I spoke to Mo earlier and he expressed an interest in being um, a liaison to Elaine McElroy's group and whatever. So, Again, this is, this is, it doesn't have to be like a deep dive on this. There are, Jen, um, you also have no liaison role. And um, this is a be careful what you wish for thing because I do want to speak a little bit later about how we do the liaison roles. That's, you'll see that it's in the discussion coming up. But for now, if anybody is not happy with their current assignment, 
and or wants to be someone else, you know, for example, the school um, or anything really. Um, this is a good Got time. A to, I'm going to, we can shuffle people around. And I'd be happy to, to do anything. So just let me know. Okay, Bob. Um, I got a question. I'm uh, muted on uh, speaking about shellfish, but I'm happy to be the liaison. I don't know if that's uh, counterproductive or not. But. That's a great question. And I don't know the answer to it. I, I can't think of anybody better qualified to be the liaison okay. to the shellfish community than you, I would agree. at least on this committee. Um, it doesn't seem to me, you can't vote on issues regarding the shellfish industry in this town, but I don't see why you can't report on it. Charlie, would you have any opinion on this? Oh, he's I having trouble getting in. Oh, there he is. No, you he got did. it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I thought I was struggling, but I wasn't. <laughs> um, okay. You know um, what I would recommend, <laughs> Bob. Um, you know, there's there's always people. Um, you know, I, I believe most people are good, um, but there's a small percentage of people that look for trouble. So I think obviously from what I'm hearing, you're probably the best person, but the ethics commission has a toll free number. And if you just call them, they're gonna call you right back within the same day and a half. And then you won't end up with a, you know, a complaint filed against you. They probably are gonna say to you, just file a disclosure with the town clerk's office. Well, that, that's been done, Charlie. He, uh, Bob has to recuse himself on any issues, any voting issues regarding yeah. fishing and whatnot. But does that, does that preclude him from speaking to that community and bringing back intelligence to the committee uh, about what's going on? Uh, that's why I encourage you to talk to the attorney of the day for the Exodus Commission, because they're, they're going to give you good advice. My advice is, um, is, is, is not going to be as qualified. So. Bob, we, are you okay with that? And we'll just, we'll just sure. hold on that. I, I can send yeah. that to you, Bob. And, and okay. I, uh, you know, I have a, I have a lot of different roles and I live in volunteer in Brewster and I call them all the time. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Steven, Steven, as I look at your list, you had recreation, beaches, water, and wastewater. That seems like a, a deep dive, so to speak. Uh, would you be willing to give up some of that for? No, yeah, I want them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's well, that's settled. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. I mean, if anybody wants something, they want, but you know, I'm fine with it. Jen, would you be interested in working with either Becky for recreation or the beach, uh, Suzanne, or water and wastewater people, Jim and Kurt? Does, um, do any of those grab you? I, I mean, recreation or, or beach is probably more in my wheelhouse. Um, Are you okay with that, Stephen? Sure. Okay. Consider it done. So let it be written, so let it be done. As <laughs> who, who knows that movie reference? I thought it was from the Old Testament. That, that was Steve Martin did that song, right? The, well, that too, yeah. No, it's Yul, Yul Brenner from uh, the Ten Commandments. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Commandment. So are we done on the liaison role thing? Um, I believe we are. Unless, right. in, unless anybody else wants to change, we are done, yes. So on to um, update on town finance from the town administrator. Um, as you may recall from a previous meeting, uh, Charlie has graciously um, agreed in time to um, do month, I guess it's gonna be monthly reports to the select board. Is that right? Or bi-monthly? I don't know, because they meet more than once a month on the current status of town finance and the remediation per the, the audit and whatnot and that he will make those reports available to the finance committee as well as they happen. However, I believe um, that may be premature at this point. So I'm gonna give you the floor, Charlie, if that's all right. And just give us whatever update you have at this point in time. Unmute first, please. Okay. Um, I would, yes, thanks so much. So first of all, I would just wanna say uh, this is the most fun I've had at a finance committee meeting in a long time. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and I, and I actually sincerely mean that. I think it's it's nice. There's a there's a sort of a cultural uh, atmosphere that I find productive and cohesive. So thanks. I I do I, I do really like it. Um, so I'll, I'm just going to run through a bunch of different items. Maybe I'll just go through them all, and then if you have any questions, um, I'll answer them in whatever fashion you want. So um, I've been here for like two and a half months now. Um, you know, let's face it, the first month was just sort of trying to deal with getting ready for town meeting. Um, thanks to Harry Tarkanian, uh, obviously, and, and, uh, and Dan Silverman, who really did a lot of work to get that all put together. Um, and then after that, you know, that was June 26th, then, you know, June 30th, we're closing the fiscal year and trying to, you know, put all the pieces together to close out the fiscal year. So, you know, that through the middle of July, and then we had the joint meeting with the select board and the finance committee um, to finish up that business. So, you know, those things have been sort of taking center stage. And I'll say, when you think about it, um, and this is important for the finance committee, at the um, annual town meeting on June 26th, we transferred $300,000 from budgets that had surpluses to budgets that had deficits. And then at that meeting that um, you had with the finance committee with Lisa Sauve, you transferred another $200,000 to, to sort of put some more fingers in the dikes. But in the end, um, we transferred a half million dollars um, to cover shortfalls from surpluses. So that, that's kind of a lot of money to have to deal with by transfers. So, you know, clearly there's a, you, you know, I think it, a concern that are these budgets being put together in a thorough and deliberate way. So I only say that because I think that's something that we all want to work together to make sure when we fashion a budget and I'd like to help put together a budget for 22. I'm not sure when I'm gonna leave, but before I leave. Um, so at least, or at least put the pieces together to make sure that we have a budget that reflects uh, the community needs. But anyway, we got all that done. Um, and then um, what's been going on too is before I got here, um, the town had requested that the Department of Revenue, the Division of Local Services come in and, and do an evaluation of the town's uh, financial management practices. Uh, so, and in, in that's something you do in good times and bad times, frankly. Uh, Brewster actually uh, did one recently because it's just a good checkup. It's like going to the dentist and, you know, making sure that uh, all your fillings are in good shape. Anyway, um, in, in Wellfleet's case, um, you know, the fiscal review by the Department of Revenue has more urgency and more value because we are facing some difficulties. Anyway, that, that process started today. Uh, the Department of Revenue um, had a team uh, come down today. I think there were five uh, officials from the Department of Revenue. And what's nice is they, they deal with all aspects of local government finance. Um, and the director of local services was down too, um, because obviously they realized there's a heightened urgency in Wellfleet. And today's uh, process was that they met with all, they, they started off and met with me probably more for entertainment reasons, because um, I know a lot of them over you know, many years. Uh, but more importantly, they met with your, um, your town collector, your assistant town accountant, your town assessor, uh, and, and, um, and your town treasurer. So, and, and they met with Lisa Sauve and Mary McIsaac, your interim town accountants, to really just sort of start to peel away the layers of our operations to try to understand what some of the issues and concerns were. So anyway, that's, it's a good thing in my mind. They were here today. Uh, they're gonna be back again um, and they're gonna wanna meet with the select board members. And, um, and 
a couple of members of the finance committee, most likely. So it's really an investigative kind of a process uh, so that they can sort of understand what our issues and concerns and problems are. In the end, uh, they will produce a detailed report um, with recommendations um, to the community on what they believe we all should be doing to uh, improve the current situation. So anyway, that's going on right now. Maybe I'll stop there for a moment and just see if you have any questions about that process. Do you know when they're coming back? Um, the answer is I don't know, but um, they're going to sometime next week give me a date when they're gonna return. Um, so as soon as I know, Fred, I will let you, I'll reach right out to you. Um, if there's anyone on the committee who would like to be involved in that, be at that meeting, please let me know, okay? Just I'd like to. Okay, so we have a couple of volunteers, that's great. Yeah, that'd be good. And um, so anyway, as soon as I hear, Fred, I will uh, get back to you. Okay, thank you. But I, I've done this in the past in Brewster and it, it, you know, you know, I would say in Brewster, they were, you know, tweaking things, making modest recommendations and changes. You know, that might be a little more robust in this report, but time will tell. Um, so, okay, uh, now- um, Question, Charlie, do, oh, they work, sorry. do they work off of the audit and the conclusions that come from the audit at all, or are they working directly with the, the administrators in the town and doing their own forensic? They, uh, they do both, you know, they, they've reviewed the uh, management comments and the audit because let's face it, those are lightning rod issues. Those are indicators of uh, maybe some systemic issues um, and concerns. So they use that to um, sort of uh, quit quiz and poke and prob uh, on our operations. And you know, the, the whole process isn't to, you know, um, point fingers, but it's more to identify strengths and weaknesses and then solutions to the weaknesses. So it's really, it's a proactive process to sort of help um, the town improve uh, fiscal performance. And, you know, a lot of the um, financial operations that, are go are, that occur in every community in Massachusetts are governed by statutory provisions, you know, um, so, um, you know, and they have a lot of, um, I, I should have mentioned this, they, they have a lot of guidance documents. And so they use that to educate um, and help people succeed. But they will be looking at our financial management uh, policies and procedures and making some recommendations uh, using the best management practices that exist uh, in the Commonwealth. So that'll be another aspect of this. <laughs> and so I think, um, you know, sort of what I've briefly talked to here and there to people about is, you know, when, when I finish, you know, my tour duty here, which will have a shelf life in Lisa and Mary, I think the idea is we, we put in place new policies, procedures and practices, but then after that, we want to test those for a while, not, not to find fault, but, you know, to help train in, uh, folks on what these requirements are. So uh, that'll be part of my effort while I'm here. Um, and then as I've, uh, you'll see, I'll suggest going forward is that maybe retain someone like me, Mary and Lisa to come in periodically to take a look and are these things being adhered to? Uh, because you, you know, you can, it's, it's a lot better to spend money, not like today on people like me, Mary and Lisa, uh, but spending money on training and education and support um, is, is, a better, is a better vehicle, so. Thank you. So I, had a, I just had a quick, quick question and Charlie, I think you um, touched on a lot of it, but um, my question basically was the group of five, I'm assuming that they have different disciplines and that they will be not just looking at policy procedures and, and testing of, of audit um, systems, but have a holistic approach to make sure that we can get back on the track. So I'm assuming that the five have 
different disciplines for our big picture. Yeah, I should have uh, should have mentioned that, but thanks for asking that question. But you're entirely correct. They they reflect different operational interests within the Department of Revenue. So they're really, and, and, and frankly, um, we all know each other. You know what I mean? Because um, it, it because we you know I interact with them setting the tax rate. Lisa Sauvey and Brewster on different aspects, Mary McIsaac on treasury and collection. So yeah, the, it's all the disciplines from the DOR. So it's, it's really, uh, it's, it, it, we should embrace it because it's, um, it, it's a good thing. Awesome. And, you know, it's a little scary, right? You know, it's like, um, you know, we, we all have strengths and weaknesses. We do certain things uh, better than others. Uh, but if we find out our weaknesses, um, then we can improve on those. So. Well, here's one of the here's one of the scary thoughts is that is that this does need to be a, a holistic approach. Um, and I, I do think, you know, I, I'm not into the pointing fingers game. I'm like here. I'm I'm thinking here's where we are. Let's get to where we need to be in the most efficient way. Um, and one of the one of the frightening things for me looking forward because I'm not a backwards looking girl is that when you do leave that we make sure that those policies and those stress tests are in place yeah. so that we don't fall apart again. Um, and as a finance committee and having gone through this and having seen what the last year has been, um, I, I feel like there's a, a yeoman's amount of work going on um, with, with everybody involved in this. And I just wanna make sure when we put everything in place and we're off and running from the starting line that we don't get tripped up again. So I appreciate everything that you're doing and, and just wanna make sure that, that there's a, a continuity to the next people who are um, in the town and, and leading the financial processes. Yeah, and I feel that's a part of my job while I'm here to set those systems up to, to help you succeed going forward. And I do wanna say that all of our the folks that have been participating in this process have been really cooperative and helpful. So I, I, I thank them, you know, it, it's, it's, it is hard, uh, but, but they've been engaged and that er, everybody's, I think, trying to work together, so. Yes, Mo, you're, mu you're muted, Mo. Thank you. I'm, I'm wondering, and, and Charlie, I don't know if you've got an answer for this. Are we set up? <coughs> Uh, to have a FinCom representative or liaison with any search committee that uh, will be in place, I assume, shortly to look for the person that's going to replace Charlie. Are we on a road to that? Is it um, in the planning stage? Do we know? Um, yeah, okay. Thanks, Mo. Um, you know, I... I, I try to always be forthright about this, right? I, I work on a 90 day, the, the way the charter works, the select board can only enter into a contract for me for up to 90 days. So um, my first 90 day contract expires on August 7th. So the select board last night did authorize um, an extension of that contract to um, whatever 90 days from the seventh <laughs> is. Um, but you know, I, you know, I when I talk about it with the select board, I always say, you know, like I have a conflict of interest. Speaking of conflicts, right? I have a conflict of interest because every time I uh, suggest a delay in advertising for my vacancy, I make more money. And Fred and I have kind of talked about this in jest. So I like to talk about that aspect of of my role anytime anybody asks me a question of that. But anyway, um, you know. Uh, Charlie, can I add that the simple answer to your question, Mo, is no. There is no process at this point to include the finance committee or even to begin the search, as I understand it. But e even if the search were conceptually forming, we are not yet involved in participating in it. Yeah. And so I, I, and I, and I have sort of encouraged the selectmen not to talk about it yet, um, you know, because I think it's too early. Uh, but but it's not it's around the corner. So I would say when you you know the selectmen think about um, forming a search committee, um, if you want to give them some input, this would be a good time to do that because they're going to have to start thinking about that relatively soon. Um, and I I think a broad 
representation. Um, I did, so, you know, even me, I frankly, when I talk to the selectmen, I would like to ser serve on your search committee process. I did in Provincetown. I think I had some value. Harry but, did as well. When you're not right. Yeah. Place. Yeah, I'm a little bi biased because I, you know, Harry's great. And he's a friend of mine. Um, so yeah, I think we, the town should start to think about who they want uh, to serve in this process. So when you see your select board members, start to talk to them about that. Okay. Uh, but I am in my mind thinking about when we should start having some policy, just convers public conversations about that process. But I'd, I'd like to obviously make some gains, make some improvements. So, you know, when we do go out um, in, to the universe to look for somebody, we, we can say we're in a good course, we're trending to a good good place. So that that's my long answer to that. So. Now, Charlie made a good point the other day that it might be premature now because you get a smaller pool of candidates if they perceive that the town is in, in deeper shit than we are, frankly. Um, and in three months, it may be a more attractive job than it is at this very moment. I yeah. totally agree. I was just thinking the same thing that, that you know, you're going to probably um, attract a, a more quality candidate once we have the ship righted. I totally agree with that, Fred. Yeah. Um, Charlie, did you have anything else in terms of this sort of preliminary report? Or should we um, move on? Could I, uh, well, the only thing I was going to, can I talk a little bit about some of the things that we've been working on? Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Is that all right? Yes. So I, I want to give the FinCom, you know, because I think I like to, you know, have people know what we're doing, you know, because we are spending your money to pay all of us. And, and the more information we get out to the community about our efforts, I think, you know, transparency is uh, valuable. So anyway, what have really Mary McIsaac and Lisa have been working on over the past few weeks? Um, you know, if you're, you know, uh, if you take a look at the uh, audit uh, management letter, you know, the, the, you have three stabilization funds. I forget what they are. One's a general stabilization fund. One's a Marina Stabilization Fund, and there's one other that I um, can't remember right now. And then you have your OPEB fund, which is your post-retirement cost for retirees for healthcare. Anyway, these funds in the audit have been commingled. You know, they, they're supposed to be separate, um, uh, independent uh, fund balances. They've been commingled over the last couple of years. So anyway, we've been spending a lot of time. We've been mm -hmm. reconciling and re-recording journal entries for these different funds over the past couple of years. So we're pretty close to having that issue um, ad ad resolved and addressed. Um, now, obviously, as I mentioned to you earlier, we've completed the final payroll and accounts payable warrant for fiscal 2021. And we've established an encumbrance process for outstanding invoices. So that's in, you know, that's in pretty good shape. That's a fair amount of work at the end of the fiscal year. And then um, going forward, as of July 1st, 2021, Lisa Sauvet has developed a whole new chart of accounts uh, for fiscal year uh, 22 with specialized appropriate coding for all departments, boards, and committee committees. And that information has been distributed to all the department heads along with a guidance document so that what we really want to happen so that we, you know, is that we want to be able at the end of each month issue an expenditure and revenue report by department. And so, you know, we want that to be uh, a document that has, you know, management um, uh, value to management of all these nice organizations. Uh, so that establishing a chart of accounts really important so they can track their expenditures in the specialized areas that they want. So it, what was happening in the past a lot of times is department heads would submit their invoices and then they didn't really have a chart of accounts. Uh, so they would just have accounting do that. Well, you know, that's really not the best way to do it because sometime accounting office doesn't know uh, exactly where they want to uh, apply these uh, expenditures towards. But anyway, so that's going to that's going to happen, and uh, and department. Hey, Charles. Yeah, Charles, 
I'm sorry, one thing, are each of the departments responsible to do their own input into the VADAR system? Well, the, the, the system has that capability. In, in, in Brewster, where Lisa and I worked, that happened. So department heads enter their old invoices in a batch mode into VADAR. It's then transferred to accounting and accounting reviews that. But we're not at that point here in Wellfleet yet, but someday I think we'd want to be there. Okay. Uh, they, they, they code them right on the bill. They submit the bills to accounting and we enter the, the, the information into, into VADAR. But we should trend towards what Fred just talked about going forward because it, it's more efficient, you know. But anyway. Uh, Charlie, can I just comment on that? Wouldn't this be the perfect opportunity that the town starts to talk to town department heads and say, you know what? We're all a part of this. Here's something that you have to do or could you do please? Would it make things more streamlined and help us in the end? Yeah, I don't think we have the technology capable uh, capability to do it. Oh, okay. Um, and and I, you know, as I said, we got so much going on. I, I don't. I think Lisa would be uncomfortable with that, frankly, right now. Um, it sounds like there's a training opportunity next year, though, or later in the year yeah. to get the department. Right. Heads up. Yeah, I don't mean right now, but oh, down yeah. the line, as part of your recommendation, as you leave. <laughs> You yeah. say that part of it is this too, so. Yeah, I think that's, we definitely want to get to that place. And remember, I had talked to you all about maybe retaining Mary and Lisa in some role to assist going forward for a while. They're going to be, you're going to need them more than you're going to need me. Uh, but anyway, um, so anyway, as I mentioned, that that has all been done. We feel good about that. Um, and then debt service, you know, if you think about the budgetary process, remember just before town meeting, I, I met with the finance committee and said, hey, um, the debt budget that we have was not fully funded and I had to increase the debt budget by, I don't know, $400,000 plus, you know, so, uh, uh, but anyway, so that they, they have also, Lisa, this is mostly Mary, they have spent a lot of time, they reviewed and identified all prior authorized but unissued debt for FY20 and 21. And they've set up a, um, an appropriate accounting structure to, to manage that debt going forward. So that, these are work elements that have touched upon in the audit that they're, they're, they're peeling away the layers of the onion and, um, and making progress on. So that was a big effort largely by Mary, but also by Lisa. And then, um, you know, grant management is really important too. And, and you know, it's interesting, Wellfleet has a lot of, you guys get a lot of grants. I mean, people are doing good things. We just got that big Harbor dredging grant and there's a couple of other grants coming around that I can't talk too much about um, relative to the Herring River project that are gonna be announced soon. So anyway, they've been setting up uh, new account uh, accounting structures so that we can properly you know manage um, and re able to report on these grant management issues for the town so those are the critical things that Lisa and Mary have been working on um, and then we're going to start reporting uh, to the uh, what you know if you look at the select board's agenda you know they have at the beginning of the meeting they have the COVID update by our health director, Hillary. And then we're going to include a financial management update at the beginning of the agenda. And um, so you'll start to see a new format in the agenda. We'll, we'll, we'll be reporting to the public, you know, these things like I just talked about and then reporting on the more detailed issues raised in the audit. Um, so that's, and, and, the, and the reason I'd like to have that at the beginning of the agenda is that you pay Lisa, Mary, and Charlie an hourly rate, you know, so I'd rather have Lisa and Mary be able to do the financial update, you know, efficiently and quickly at the beginning of the agenda, and then they can log out of the meeting and, and uh, go home and spend time with their family. Um, Charlie, I'm sorry, I, I think you had indicated as well that we could, as a finance committee, expect a similar report at yeah. our meetings as well. Yeah, we'd be glad to. Yeah, I would encourage that and we'd be glad to do that. Um, you know, because, you know, the idea is transparency and, um, and getting the word out that we're, 
starting to tackle these things. Um, so, and, um, and I would just want to say too, because sometimes, you know, um, you know, is the glass half empty or is it half full, right? And, um, you know, I, I prefer half full. And um, when the select board did, you know, I was grateful and, um, you know, honored to serve as the interim town administrator in Wellfleet. Um, you know, I have had a lot of support by uh, department heads, employees, you know, they, they are, many are really committed to the town and they love their community. So I just wanna thank all those folks that have been helping us all succeed because there's a lot of good people out there, so. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Charlie before we move on? I have a general question. Go ahead, Bob. Um, we were supposed to have a million dollar bond issue for buying the Hilga Trust. Is that gonna happen or did it happen? Um, you know, the, I have, uh, the answer is I don't know, but I can find out for you. I know Lisa and Mary um, are, are working on that. So I'll find out for you what their plans are in debt. As a matter of fact, maybe that might be one of the nice things is for us to talk about the debt service issue with you, Paul. I don't know if that's a temporary issue out there now or it's been permanently authorized. I, I, I thought that was the gist of the original um, article, the town meeting. And I thought that's one of the main reasons why we're in hot water now. Um, yeah, I think that's sort of the least of our problems, so. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know whether that was just the bond not being issued or if it not being accounted for properly. I assume that the bond was, well, anyway. You, yeah, you know what happens when you assume? So I'm gonna. Just yeah, that was my understanding too that the bond was issued, but it was not accounted for, and it came due, and we didn't have the money allocated for it. Yeah, that that would be a Mary and um, Lisa question, but we'll, we can find out and report back okay. to you. Um, anyone else? Yeah, I just would. Uh, what is our bond rating? Are we still are we still a triple A? Yes, you are. Okay. No nicks to that at all. Having gone well, through this crisis, yeah, you know um, what happens is um, that's a process that um, occurs periodically uh, when you're about to issue um, substantive debt. Then they'll come in and re-rate you. Mm. Um, so you know, I think our our goal is to try to uh, address a number of these issues before we go through a re-rating process. And as you remember, thank you. Know, yeah, and as you remember from the maybe from one of the presentations I made just prior to the um, annual town meeting, you know, we had to use a fair amount of money out of the stabilization fund, which I didn't care for, but we had no choice at the twelfth hour. And uh, it would be nice to try to remedy that before we go through a re-rating process. So. Jeff, you had a question? Yeah, I, I'd like to follow through on Charlie's suggestion, and if we could. Uh, for their next meeting in August, if it's doable, uh, add to that a uh, discussion of the debt service. Sure. Let's put make sure that's on our next meeting's agenda. Well, having said that, I was planning on uh, us not having the meeting in August, but Maybe. I guess it's up to you guys. Said, how, how much pain do you want? Um, usually, we've taken in the past, we've taken the summer off, including July. Let's just say next meeting. Okay. Okay. Next meeting would be fine. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to bullet number four, because I think this is an appropriate time to ask Charlie. Um, my understanding is you're going to propose that we have a fall town meeting. Yeah. That it'll be kind of a reconciliation catch up where we stand and fix everything that needs to be fixed at that point. Um, could you just kind of speak to that rather than waiting yeah. until number four? Yeah, and I will. Uh, yes, of course. Um, I did. Uh, yeah. My, my, Ideally, I would like to have a late fall uh, special town meeting. And I think one of the things I frankly ideally would like to do is, is sort of replenish the stabilization fund or you know, at least come up with a multi-year plan, but make some stab at um, reallocating some of the monies that we've taken out of stabilization fund. That would be the ideal. Um, I did talk to Lisa Sauve at the end of the day when we were both leaving today, you know, because we, we can't have a fall town meeting unless we can certify free cash. And um, 
just doesn't make any sense. Um, and, and, you know, that's the challenge that Lisa and Mary have is dealing with closing out um, FY21 and dealing with some of the issues that were raised in the audit. So, you know, when I said to Lisa today, I said, you know, Lisa, do, you know, do you have any sense of when uh, you think you might be able to give me um, a feel of whether whether it's practical to have a fall town meeting? And she, she, you know, basically said, you know, Charlie, I need another month before I can really give you a good feel whether I can go to the Department of Revenue and, and finalize FY21. Um, so we, we have a lot of work to do before I can honestly say when we can have a, a fall town meeting warrant. Okay, was that your hand up, Steve? Yeah, just uh, so the main reason why you want to have a fall town meeting is to transfer money back into the stabilization fund? Yeah, that's one of the things. And then- What um, else? I, I, I want to- I, I, one of the things I, I want to do as well, I, I, I mentioned it at prior to town meeting and at town meeting floor is I'm a little concerned about the operational budget for fiscal 22. I, you know, I, we did the, you know, many people did the best they could under really tight circumstances uh, to put that budget together. Um, but I really need to spend a little bit more time looking at that budget and looking at the revenues to support that, to make sure that um, it's it's balanced, that it's sustainable. So you know, there's a little nagging part of my brain that sort of suggests I'm a little worried about that. So I might have to make some changes. I'm and as you know, this finance committee shares your concerns. Hence yeah. our right, but at the uh, same time, I have to say, you know, town meetings do cost a certain amount of money. Right? Yeah. So. I mean, the fact that the say we did use a stabilization fund, it did save us. Also, transferring monies that were over budget from other budgets to the short ones also saved everything. Yeah. I mean, if we if you don't do anything to the stabilization fund in the fall time, what do you think? Nothing's going to crash, or it wouldn't be like you know the end of the world. Yeah. You could put it off to spring. Possibly. Yeah. Well, how, how about how about I just say. I'm, I'm thinking about it, but I haven't. I haven't come to a final recommendation until I can engage a lot more people and, and address a lot more issues. And if you don't need it, I, I won't recommend it. That's fair. That's good. I think one of the things. I that, I'm sorry, Stephen. I'm sorry to talk over you. Sorry. No, I'm done. I a, Thanks. I, I think one of the things um, that is frustrating for me about being on the finance committee is when we talk about this is primarily since I've been here, what we've done is we've looked at the budgets and we've approved them based on town administrator, board of selectmen recommendations. And as the finance committee, we haven't seen the whole pictures. We haven't seen the revenue piece. We haven't seen. So we're basically going, yeah, under two and a half. It looks good. You're making, you know, you're making yeah. great cases for the money that you need to spend on whatever it is. Um, but if there's a concern about, about revenues, and especially grants, I mean, we generally don't hear, we hear, um, we meet with each department head each year and they tell us that they're pursuing grants. Um, we don't necessarily hear the end of that. So I think after this whole, for me, part of my concern is that as a finance committee, we're getting half of the story. Yeah. And I think if we had the full story, we might've been able, I, you know, hindsight is 2020, but if we had the full story, uh, I think there might've been a, a little bit more concern early on um, other than we just didn't you know it, 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 so I think going forward and reimagine I hate that word reimagining what the finance committee should be doing is I would like to get those full reports I would like to be able to see the revenues versus the expenditures I would like to be able to make sure that the department heads feel comfortable with what they're spending and I'd like to make sure that we have a, 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 a revenue picture that supports the budgets that that we're seeing. And we, we thought a couple of years ago that Vadar was gonna do that for us. Um, and we're giving it time to, to sink in and be able to do that. But I, I truly, that is one of the things that, that if I could make a wish list going forward that we are able to match revenues and expenditures on a department level, so. Oh, you know, 
Yeah, if I could, Fred, to comment. Uh, yeah, thanks. I, I, I don't know. I, Fred, I've talked to Fred about this. I probably haven't talked to the FinCom about it, but that's one of the pieces I'll do while Mary and Lisa are uh, doing the, the hard trench warfare work of digging and clawing. Um, I'll be putting together a financial forecast and, and, and the goal would, I'll, I'll show a few years in the past, but then I'll project out five years in the future. And that'll be a, a sort of a comprehensive analysis of expenditures and revenues. And uh, that should be shared with the select board and the finance committee, I believe in the fall, so you can um, develop some policy uh, positions on where you're gonna go the following spring. But I think to that point, Charlie, you know, we, we've had kind of an on and off what we call strategic planning process where we try to at least highlight or think about future expenses, the big ones, as, we, as we've discussed. If we can work with you as you put that together, uh, it would be useful for us as well in kind of reinforcing that part of what we've been trying to do in terms of anticipating things two, three years out that are going to require significant new debt or at least major prioritizations on the town, the part of the town, yeah. um, certainly the water, wastewater stuff. Um, I also discovered, I talked to Lisa Suve the other day, and I guess I didn't realize this has been interesting in the last 18 to 24 months, the things you know and the things you think you know and the things you don't know, that a lot of the revenues, and this is to your point, Kathy, a lot of the revenues that we believe are going to be available to the town in the form of the increased uh, rental tax, the pot shop taxes and all that don't get realized until 2022. They're not usable to the town, if I understood Lisa's point, until uh, after town meeting in 2022. They, they don't just show up and then you say, well, I can move that money into, into a, for example, a stabilization fund. Is that correct? Yeah, so some of your revenues, you can, um, when you have history, you can do estimated receipts. I, you know, i.e. we have 10 years of beach revenues. We have a good idea what our beach revenues are. Uh, some revenues you can't, um, they have to be based upon actuals. So that's what Lisa was talking about. It, it depends on the revenues, uh, but yeah, you, you, yeah, I think Lisa was basically saying those revenues should be actuals. And as long as you don't close Whitecrest Beach for a season, <laughs> because yeah. the actuals don't match up anyway. Yeah. Yeah, at um, least we can demonstrate that, though. Yeah. Yeah. So with your permission, I'm sorry, I'd like to say- Char Before Charlie's, could you just share quickly uh, what the status of the grass in particular uh, with the um, dredging and uh, some good news? <laughs> well, uh, uh, the, you know, we had a um, ceremony, uh, what, what day is today? Wednesday. Um, Wednesday the 28th. Yeah, Monday, I guess we had a, the state come down and we received, um, I think, a two and a half million dollar grant uh, towards the dredging project. So, um, you know, that's that, and that they issued several grants. Wellfleet got by far the largest. I think the next largest was that. As we should. Yeah, yeah, really, you should, because, you know, really? now that I've, climbed out of my hole in Brewster and uh, starting to experience Wellfleet. And I mean, it's an amazing resource you have in the harbor uh, in, in the whole net, the whole coastal network. But anyway, uh, so uh, that project um, is where, where um, the, the group of people are working on the bid documents. We hope to have those resolved in the next couple of weeks, we'll issue those bids and um, that work will be occurring this fall and early winter. So that's really a great project. Um, there are a couple of other things pending on the Herring River project and um, that are gonna be you know, good news uh, things, but I don't have the details right now. Okay, thank you. Is your hand up, Bob, or? Yeah, just one last quick question. Yes, hundred thousand dollar question. Are we any closer to getting the uh, the dump photo array online? I I don't know. You know, now that's interesting. You know, a hundred percent more than I know about that project. Well, so somebody I'll, in town hall should be 
greasing the wheels or doing something because it's a hundred thousand dollar revenue to the town. Yeah, yeah. Not spending. I, mean, I, I can. Yeah. I'll, I'll find out about it for you. Okay. The um, Eversource has put in the um, transformers. What they're waiting for right now is they've got to run the power lines over that road. So that's the last piece. So it's getting, it's closer than it's ever been. Okay. I'll check with Jay and I'll send uh, your chair a note on it. But yeah, no, I agree. I mean, that's real money. Yep. So with your permission, with all of your permission, I'd like to segue to the uh, next part of the agenda. Um, and let me, let me just give my little inspirational speech first. Um, I, I think there's a general sense that people don't really want to look backwards at this point that much uh, and do the play the blame game. Uh, having said that, um, there, well, there's more than enough um, sense on this committee. I, I was telling people in April that the committee was getting restive because we were not getting the information we needed and we were not included in the process of getting that information. And I was being told by a number of resources, wait, 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 uh, you, you know, when we have no information, we'll give it to you. And I don't think that was acceptable. Um, and I think my general sense of the finance committee is that that's not acceptable going forward. So to, to paraphrase what um, Kathy was saying, if hindsight's 2020, foresight is 2022. Um, we have an opportunity, in my opinion, especially with someone as cooperative and transparent as Charlie, at least in the helm at this point, to, I wouldn't say redefine our role, but to certainly um, uh, identify the things that we want to do and where we need to get information that we're, um, we're deficient in right now. Um, I, I invite everyone as I've done several times recently, and sometimes in relationship to quoted criticism of the Finance Committee, to read the charter, because it is very terse in terms of roles and responsibilities and what the Finance Committee's job actually is. Um, essentially, aside from us doing the capital improvement plan, we, um, with the select board, are supposed to, um, the town administrator shall prepare, present to the Select Board and Finance Committee the operating budgets, yada, yada, yada. And then at some point, uh, the Finance Committee along with the Select Board shall set a date by which the town administrator shall submit to them the comprehensive budget, blah, 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 blah. Well, in the past, that's kind of been the book. And that's we, we that fell through the cracks this past year. In December, we would get the book. And that was a comprehensive view of the budgets across all the departments negotiated between this town administrator and the department heads presented. But then there's nothing in the charter about what the finance committee is supposed to do with the book. There's nothing in the charter about us interviewing the department heads or about having an opinion on the budget or presenting it at a town meeting or anything. And I suspect when we meet with the Department of Revenue and Stephen and Kathy, and I imagine I will be there as well, that they are going to look at Massachusetts general law and the role of the finance committee and go, well, aren't you a more proactive, or don't you own the budget? And we'll have to say, well, no, the charter says the select board owns the budget along with the TA, which is true. But even there, ownership is kind of a vague thing. The reporting process in this town is the account reports to the TA, the TA right, reports- it, It's not a vague thing. It's pretty much spelled out that the budget, it's the select board's responsibility for the budget. Well, I so agree. it is spelled out. There's no vague vagueness. There. Well, vague, vague in the sense of where the finance committee fits into that process. And I think we have the opportunity now to do several things. And so this next list in the agenda are not things we have to resolve tonight. There are things that I would like people to think about between now and September when we have our next meeting. Send ideas. I'll tell you what the genesis is of each one of the bullets. Um, and I'll start with the second one, the town audit review. Um, because Kathy and I have been speaking. Kathy is an accountant and has taken it upon herself because this is what accountants do, I guess, to get two books on, on municipal accounting to study. And there they are, municipal <laughs> finance. So she's studying up. She will know more about municipal finance than anybody beyond Lisa Suve and Mary, I would imagine. No, I don't, don't go saying that. I'm just trying to figure it out, so. 
Well, there, there was an expression of interest among a number of members three, three meetings back or so when the audit was first presented to us that we wanted to understand the audit better. We wanted to have a deeper dive into it, understand the material weaknesses better. And I've spoken to Charlie and I've spoken to Kathy and with Mo and Jeff who also expressed an interest along those lines where Kathy will, with everyone's assent, I'm, I'm assuming that you'll, you'll give it, um, lead a sort of working group or subcommittee of the finance committee to work with Charlie through the spreadsheet that Charlie and, Mer and Lisa put together of how they're going to work on those material weaknesses identified in the audit and develop an, a finance committee intelligence on how we're doing, on where we are in resolving those issues specifically as it applies to the audit. The end point though, I think is that, and, and someone was mentioning this before, and I think it's, I think maybe um, Stephen, at some point we've resolved those, those issues or we hope we've resolved those issues and then we go forward. Then there's a whole new set of processes. There's a whole new way that we get reporting done. We have monthly reports on revenues and expenses. This is, this is where I think we start to see convergence between various agendas here. The DOR is gonna come in and talk to us about what we're doing. And Charlie had indicated they have their own templates for the way to do things from their perspective. Some of them will not dovetail well with the way we do it at Wellfleet, but some of them will give us guidance on what they expect at, at a minimum. And my guess is that we can step out because Kathy and Mo and Jeff and Charlie are willing to work together on communicating, and that's really all it is, that we can, as a finance committee, perhaps prepare a report in four to six months on where we stand and take a leadership role in this town on being, I hate to use the word watchdog, but in a sense, that's what it is, advisor, watchdog, um, consigliere, however you want to think of it, on where we stand in resolving the audit issues. And then what, going forward. What would you do with that, Fred, once you get that report? Would you well, publish it? Yep. And I'm let guessing, the community well, know that as the financial watchdog for you, here's what, what we've done. Is that what you're yeah, thinking of? I'm just thinking this out loud to some degree, Stephen, but I think there's- Yeah, an no, that's fine. That's why these I things are I think there's an good, opportunity so. as well to go forward that we have that as we've discussed, every meeting, we get a short financial overview from the account accountant. Which oh, yeah. Yeah, done. It's very beneficial. And, th and then we, 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 we weigh that against proper, you know, common practice. So if we hear that a department is not following the rules, we can, we, we can, take, a, we can take a role in a highlighting that. And saying, in a situation like that, what kind of role would you see us taking? I don't think we can be involved in something like that. Well, that's, I think all we can do is highlight it. I don't, we, we're not an enforcement organization. You mean we're not finger policy. points? No, Stephen, can I, can I jump in? Sure. You mind if I jump in? Because this is sort of the way that I envision this is that, you know, you, you have your liaison reports and, and I sort of envision this as a liaison report with the town accountants. I don't think it's necessarily we're gonna say, you know, it's not gonna be a disciplinary thing where we're gonna point fingers and say, you know, you're not doing this. But I, but I think that it's more of a, you know, there, I view it as more of a, an eyes on the cookie jar thing to make sure that we don't get so far down this rabbit hole that we need to bring in um, you know, Charlie, not, not that I don't love having you here because I really love it, but I don't think that there should ever be this kind of emergency. And, and I, I think that if I could look at this and say, this is my liaison report so I can meet and understand the processes, get that other half of the revenue picture. And if somebody is falling through the cracks, if we're not seeing reports or something, maybe it's it's an issue to, to meet with the town administrator as the liaison and say, hey, is there a way that we can support this department or what are we not feeling? When we get a, when we get a, the way that I see it is when we get a town administrator in there who's permanent and in here after the ship is rated, that we should be checking to make sure that we're on course. And I see it more of, of a let's check to see if we're on course. And I envision the town administrator, if we hire the correct person, to be pulling that out before we are. 
but this gives me the ability um, and whoever wants to join me, the ability to come back to you guys as a finance committee and say, hey, here's what I'm looking at. Here's the numbers. Here's the processes. It's very dry. It's very black and white. It's not really sexy. But I feel personally that I want the whole picture. And, and I don't, and I think that it's going to be a, a more of a, a spreadsheet kind of thing and, and not, a, you're not doing your job. It might be, you know, can we get somebody some support? Yeah, Mo, I'll get to you in one second. I just want to say one thing. Stephen, to a point you made before, the reporting process in the town is very clear, that where mm -hmm. it rolls up to and where it rolls down to. Back when I was doing organizational stuff in the 90s, you'd get org charts, and then periodically there'd be these dotted line relationships, which were not authority. They were just reporting. It was just information would flow to another area. I think we have the things that we've talked about, that people have talked about, the committee has talked about, and have been things like we want to we want greater visibility into revenue. We want we want to understand if people are following good procedure. It, it's more than just reviewing the budgets, the operations budgets that we get in December, you know, in the two months in January and February and going, yep, looks okay, two and a half percent. I think the sense I've had in the last four months particularly is that the finance committee would like to, to see a little bit further into the process. And no, no that, I agree. I agree with you on that. Yeah, that's I mean, true. Really, what, what, what has happened to this town is a rare occurrence and it's never going to happen again. Everybody's, I think people are just running around just trying to figure out, you know, who yeah, to blame basically. And it's just such a friggin' mess yeah. that moving forward, everything that's going to come out of this is going to be good because there'll be those things in place where this will never happen again, I hope. And I, I, would, I would say too, that this doesn't necessarily have to be a forever thing. It may be that a year from now, um, we, we're like the Lone Ranger. We say our job here is done on this front and that things are steady state, things are going well and we don't need to jump in in any way. Um, Mo, you wanted to say something, I'm sorry. Really just to reiterate, I, I think, um, Kathy comes to it with a great deal of knowledge. And I think what the outcome of this can be, I'm not saying a redefinition of what FinCom does, but certainly a definition of how we can be more helpful. And at what points do we put our noses into the process? Uh, that's what I would hope would come from this. And, and, you know, I'm prepared to meet with Kathy and Jeff uh, anytime to, to, to move that forward. Maybe even to read one of your books. I don't promise any. <laughs> don't, don't, All right, the little one. one. All right, not the big, not the big one. <laughs> so, so all, I, I guess what I'm, what I'm asking here is, uh, if you look at the bullets, we've already talked to Charlie about having regular financial updates from the accountant or the town administrator, and hopefully that will become enfranchised with whoever follows Charlie and, and Lisa as well. So we can count on that as part of our meetings. Five, 10 minutes at the beginning, here's where we stand. Everything's okay, good job. Um, the town audit review, we, we've already discussed that. Uh, departmental budget reviews, uh, and the liaison process are kind of related. I had a conversation with Linda about a month ago and she told me, and we, we just re redefined to some degree who the liaisons are to which department. But to be honest, we really haven't been doing very good liaising for the most part. We don't have a formal liaison process, but Linda told me that she used to, and this is going back a couple of years, I think, meet with Mark Vincent and the TA when they were putting their budgets together in December, or at least was communicating with them. So she understood what was happening through her liaison role in the DPW. It seems to me that that's almost low hanging fruit for us that at a minimum, we can work with whoever we're liaising and saying, what are your budget goals this year? Where do you stand? You know, what are, what are the, where do you see the, the conflicts being? What are you gonna be negotiating and so on? So we bring that back to our budget reviews when we do it. Um, the budget review process is another thing, and I don't know how this is going to play. Um, a couple of department heads have said they think we should review the budget with the select board in, jointly. Um, there are all kinds of tactical issues in making that work. I'm more than happy to talk to Ryan Curley on the side and see what, if any, inclination they would have 
to do that and how it would work. We're not gonna do four hour meetings. That, I, that is my promise to you. On, on my watch, there will never be a four hour finance committee meeting. Thank you. Or even a, even a two hour and a half hour for, you know, we, I don't believe you, your attention span, anyone's attention span goes beyond probably 45 minutes. So two hours is pushing it. Um, but I'll make that commitment that I'll talk to Ryan because he's new and see what, if any, willingness there is to meet with the select board on any basis to do budget reviews or budget preparation or whatever. Um, yeah, I think if you ask it in a certain sense, like, is there a need for, on their end if they need it? But honestly, I don't think that, you know, we used to have the year, the one after all the budgets were done, we get together, remember those? After yeah, the I, budget I, season. I proposed that last, right. last but December. I'd rather do that. I, I really wouldn't want to sit with the Board of Selectmen to do a budget. No, I, I proposed last year in December. Um, I feel like our, our process of working with the department has this past year has been really good and getting better. I'm not well, sure. Yeah. It can be better still to do a better job as liaisons, though, because we're, we're, in some cases, we're not talking to our department head counterparts. And we need to figure out a way to do that better. I'm not saying we have to decide that tonight. This is something I'd like you all to think about over the next month, month and a half, till the next meeting. And any ideas you have about the best way to optimize being a liaison without it being an onerous amount of work is what we can talk about. Um, well, maybe we could ask Charlie did, and Brewster, did, did the, your finance committee do the same thing, liaison process or with yep. department heads? And they did, okay. Yep. And were they very active or was it? You know, it is some are more active than others. True. Yeah. Um, uh, but, um, but, you know, I think over time, uh, in many cases, you know, the department heads developed a relationship with uh, their liaison and okay. they'd, they'd send them updates like, you know, something's going on of significance that share that with them. So yeah. it sort of it helped the relationship side of the equation. That's good. I will say that one of the weirdest conversations I've had in the last four months, five months, well, four actually at this point, was with a select board member who will remain nameless, who asked me if the uh, finance committee had looked at any of the department budgets. And this was in late March. Cool. And of course, we, we had did. We voted. Budget. Well, correct. I mean, we, we voted on what we had anyway, what we saw. And at the uh, time, they were perfectly fine budgets. I don't regret any of the votes I well, took at the time. I didn't see actuals in some <laughs> cases from the previous years, but we raised those questions. But the, it was bizarre to me that any member of the select board would ask, have we been talking to the department heads when it's all public record? So that I, I, I'm not saying that to lay blame. I'm saying that, that is a, an avatar of the lack of communication between us and the select board right now that we can, we can improve upon. We, we can at least encourage the select board to communicate better as we can with the town accountant, with the, select, with the uh, town administrator, so that we are better informed and in a better, better position. Yet, did, that, did that person look at the department heads budgets? <laughs> I'm gonna go with no. Okay. So not, why, not, why yeah, is that not, person not, asking us if we looked at it? What a dumb question. Well, there you go. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna characterize it as such. I'm gonna say it was an ignorant question. And there it is. But that's part of the deal. Part of when you look back, if it's not even about laying blame. If you look back and try to find reasons, lack of communications is one of them. And if we had known, I mean, just one of the things in the charter is that the select board is supposed to be fully informed regarding all department operations, fiscal affairs, general problems, and administrative actions by the town administrator. And section three says it can conduct investigations and authorize the town administrator or other agent to investigate the affairs of the town. Well, there's right there is a confluence of they didn't get the right reports and they didn't ask why they weren't getting the right reports. And that I will say is a responsibility issue. But we were going through so many changes, so be it. That's the past. Going forward, we have a wonderful interim town administrator who's extremely <laughs> communicative. We'll and, test that. <laughs> and there's no reason for us to, to, to not demand better information going forward. That's all I'm saying. So uh, I don't really have anything else on those bullets at this point, except say any ideas you guys have about 
ways to improve the finance committee's flow of information in and out of places that we where, where we need it, please forward them to me or through Karen to me. And at our next meeting, we'll summarize them and and we'll we'll figure out what we what we want to choose and what we don't want to choose and how we want to go forward. So Fred, at, yeah. At, at this point, do you want to consider um, that me and Jeff and Mo will go forward in some kind of semblance and get a little bit of more order and clarity around sort of moving forward with the more detailed information? And I I'm assuming that's that a done deal. Yeah, actually, I'm assuming, assuming that's a done deal, Kathy. And it'll be during working hours. <laughs> you know, we a joke about the pig and the chicken, you know? The, chi the chicken is... Um, uh, what, well, how how does it put it? Um, um, the uh, it, one is committed and one is involved. Yeah, they in terms of breakfast, the yeah. the, the chicken is involved, the pig is committed. So uh, you you guys are we, committed at this point to. Do we need a vote to set up this subcommittee? I don't. Know, I don't think so. I'll call it a order task force. Task force. That's a good task one. Task yeah. like force, that. not a committee. You're right. the audit task force. Yes, Charlie. You know. Um, um, you guys don't know me that well, but 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 I am married, so I'm almost thinking. And my wife hasn't seen me today. I, I don't think you need me anymore. I'll stay if you do, but if I can exit stage right, it might be better for all of us. You absolutely, you. And, and we're we're, we're segueing very quickly. Thank you, Charlie. For the Thank summer. you. Thank you so Thank you. much. Okay, nice to chat, guys. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, so, so that's it. I mean, that's in, that's the summary. Anybody have any questions, please let me know offline. It's fine, you know. I don't want to keep you any more. Than I got a quick liaison report that I can't really talk about. Do you want to? <laughs> What's is that not a joke? coming is that, um, you know how the Energy and Climate Action has really been working on grants and uh, we just were awarded one, but I'm not supposed to share that with the public yet. So don't tell anyone. And so uh, it's really- The public is watching right now. You know that, right? Um, I didn't say what it was. So yeah, okay, so I don't good, know. Good, good. I just want to be exactly. so clear. I'm just saying, just and me. another thing, and again on the liaison, I have a liaison with that committee and the police. And one of the things that uh, is coming up and we're looking at is seeing if we can get a grant to, uh, we, we've already now identified a uh, hybrid police car list that the state will approve. And now we're going to try to see if we can get a grant. So. There are ways being the liaison we can nice. help out. Nice. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. mm -hmm. So in terms of upcoming meetings, if no one has a problem with not having a meeting in August, I know that's a double negative. I would prefer not to have a meeting in August. I'd like to everybody to so moved. take a break, break. Thank you. I don't know if we have to vote on it, but there you go. No meeting in August. Do we have to vote on it? No. Oh, only, only if they want, want to. Um, We'll set a date for September. I will say right now that my son is getting married on Cape Cod on September 18th. My preference would be to have the meeting after September 18th. Because he's going to be getting married. That's, that's my wedding anniversary. So, so moved. So <laughs> September, we're looking at um, boom, 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 18th. Just send the, out the invite. <laughs> Let, let's say September 22nd, OK? Fine. Great. And that's it. Um, I have no I'll other business. So, I'm uh, sorry. Mo and Jeff, I'll be in touch separately. I'm on vacation this week, so you probably won't hear from me till next week, and we'll put a process together. Awesome. Mazel tov. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if anyone has any other business, new business, I am all ears. I have none. And uh, thanks for everybody for, for showing up tonight. It makes it a lot easier when all nine of us are here. Um, and um, I would be happy to entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Back here. Yeah, all those in favor. Yay! Yeah. Happy summer, everybody. Have a great Bye. summer. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks, Fred. Bye. Bye. Bye.